Hey guys, in this video we are going to talk about the white balance settings inside of Lightroom. And these are important settings because beautiful white balance leads uh, or is the key to creating beautiful images. And so it's really important that we understand how to use these sliders correctly and understand um, in an intuitive way what they're communicating to us. If you've ever color corrected images before in any other editing program, you'll know that the color correction tools do not look like th this. They do not look how they look inside of Lightroom. For example, here is Photoshop's, and you can see that uh, we've got our red, our green, and our blue, our RGB, and then our uh, CMY, cyan, um, magenta, and yellow on the other side. And in, as, as you cor color correct with those uh, sliders, basically you are adding or removing a color from your image. And inside of Lightroom, it works a little bit differently. Instead of being of the mindset of adding or removing a color, you should be in the mindset of what type of light is present in the image when it was shot. And that way, you'll start to understand why the temperature and the tint sliders are there rather than these color sliders that you see in Photoshop. Light inherently has color, and that color is picked up by your camera. Your eye may be able to adjust for that, but your camera is not. And so we need to adjust for that inside of our images or in our camera. Um, as you'll look, this image's white balance is as shot, and most of your images will come in looking just like this. And what that means is that Lightroom is using the white balance selection that you chose on your camera. And so, for example, on this image, my white, the white balance on my camera was set to auto. And so my camera has a little sensor that is trying to detect the color of light that is around to, to get the white balance correct in my image. Now, looking at this image, I can see that it is too warm. I don't like it. I want, I want to cool the image down. And so this is how we need to think about our images inside of Lightroom. We need to think about warming them up or cooling them down. And if you think in those terms, instead of just asking yellow or blue, it should make it a little easier. Take a look at my beautiful color scale here that I created. And this will show you that color is measured on the Kelvin scale in degrees. And that's why it's called temperature. The average midday sunlight is roughly 5,500 degrees Kelvin, while tungsten, which is a regular household light bulb, is around 2,500 degrees Kelvin. Your average sunrise or sunset is going to be right around 2,000 degrees Kelvin, and an overcast day is right around seven to 8,000 degrees Kelvin. And so as you look at this, you can start to understand where light falls on this Kelvin scale. Now Lightroom provides a drop-down menu, so let's take a look at that. Currently set to as shot, but I could go over here and move it to any of these drop-down um, menu options. So for example, this image was shot under tungsten light, under regular household light bulbs. So if I switch to tungsten, Lightroom is going to move my temperature slider to what the average temperature of that light is. Nothing intuitive about it. It's simply just punching in a number that is the average for tungsten light. And if you look at my image, you can see that it is um, obviously too cool. I, I don't like what it's chosen. I could also go to auto, and instead of doing auto white balance on my camera, I'm having Lightroom automatically adjust for the lighting in the image. And you can see that it hasn't changed anything. It thinks this is good. Now, obviously, it's not good. And so I'm going to use my sliders to kind of figure out exactly where I want it to be. So if I start to just kind of raise it right through here, probably right about there. And so I'm assuming, as I look at this image, that the temperature of the light that is on them in this image is about 3,800 degrees Kelvin. And I know that because I see that I set my temperature to 3,889. Now, if I wanted to, I could put my cursor inside the number and I could start typing in numbers right here. And it's going to accept those numbers and be happy about it. I can also put my cursor in there and then I can hit the up and down arrows to start to move, to find a, to kind of 
fine tune to get the color exactly where I want it to be. If I hold the shift key down and hit the arrow key, it moves in much larger increments. And then I can start to see or look with my eye where I want that number to be. Sometimes when we're using the mouse, it can't be quite as accurate as if we're using the keyboard. So I think 3800 is where I like this image to be. And so that's an easy way to adjust your white balance settings um, without using the slider. Now the next slider that we have is called tint. And this slider should be used very, very sparingly. And the reason for that is because tint is really made to just remove color casts. You can see on one end it is green and on the other end it is magenta. Now mainly you'll use this slider when you are shooting under the conditions of gas emitting lights. This is going to be lights like fluorescent or neon lights. These tend to give you a green cast to your images and that's when you'll be able to use this slider to remove that color cast. You can also slide it gently to the left or the right uh, to add a hint of green or a little bit magenta, but you want to use it very sparingly. Now if I have an image that I want to remove a little bit of red in the skin or, or something like that, this is not the best place to do that. You would want to do that either in your HSL panel to just desaturate the reds a little bit, or you could do that with the, with the adjustment brush and do more of a localized adjustment where you remove the red specifically from the parts of their skin by painting on that adjustment. So let's move to the next image that I have here, and it's of this couple. Um, this is an engagement, and you can tell that this image is too cool. And so what I want to do is, first off, let me just think what type of light this was shot under. It was actually quite cloudy on this day, so if I go to my drop-down menu and go to cloudy, it should adjust it to what the temperature is of cloudy light. Now, it's gotten pretty close. I might say that's a little too warm for me. So I'm going to go ahead and click in the numbers, and I'm just going to start to hit the down arrow until I start to see where it's warmer, but yet not quite so warm. And I would probably say about right there. I'm going to hit enter, and you can see what I've done is basically I used the drop-down menu to get close, to get in the vicinity of what the, the uh, temperature is for that type of lighting, and then I just kind of tweak it to make it how I want. Let's go to the next image of this couple. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. It's obviously a sunny day, so I'm going to go ahead and click um, and go to daylight. Okay, and that's actually made the image a little cooler than what I would like. It's also added a bit of magenta, and I'm okay with the magenta there, but let me warm it up. I'm going to click in there, and I'm going to hold down the shift key and hit the up arrow a couple of times just to start to warm this image up. Now I'm going to let go of the shift key and just do smaller amounts somewhere in that range right there I think I'll be happy with. Let's go to one more image, this couple. This color already looks pretty good. Um, this was also shot on a cloudy day and so if I go to cloudy it moves me to 6500 and I like it. I think that that looks really great right there. So there's one more thing I want to teach you about the white balance tools inside of Lightroom. I'm going to go back to this first image and let's go ahead and I'm going to double click on the WB to reset everything inside of uh, the white balance. We are going to talk about the white balance selector tool and that's this tool right here. If I go ahead and click on that and drag it over the image you'll see that a target comes up and that target shows me RGB values for every pixel that I hover over in my image. How you use this tool is you want to find a neutral point or a gray point inside of your image. Now it can be a darker gray, almost black, or a lighter gray, almost white. And how you'll know that it's a gray point is those RGB numbers will be almost exactly the same. And so looking at, at this image, I could come down here to her dress, and I can see that I've got pretty close, but they're not close enough for me. Let me see if I can come up through here. I'm not getting it, so I'm thinking her dress might not be the best spot. I can come over here to her hair, and now my numbers are a lot closer. I'm, I've got 24, 23, and 20. 
So that's pretty close. Let me look through here. I think that was pretty close right there. So I'm going to go with this one, 25, 24, 21. And if I click on it, what will happen is it will tell Lightroom that that is my neutral point and to adjust all of the colors around it. And look what number it chose. It went ahead and moved the temperature slider to 3800. But it did one more thing. It moved the tint slider a little bit as well. And so I was pretty close with my temperature, but it just added a little bit of tint. And I really like how that looks. So I'm going to click on that one more time. And we're just going to talk about the toolbar at the bottom. And so if you don't have the toolbar at the bottom, just hit the letter T key to get it appear to appear. Now what we have down here is I can make the squares larger or smaller. This will make my numbers harder and harder to match up to be close to um, the same if I make them smaller. I can show the loop or not show the loop. So I can get rid of it and just go ahead and guess what my neutral tone is. And then the auto dismiss button. If I uncheck that, I basically can click anywhere on the image and it will adjust and it will not dismiss the tool until I hit the done button. So let me come back over here and just kind of get it right again. Pretty close. Right about there. But I like the auto dismiss button selected, so I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click done. And that's basically how to use the tools to white balance your images inside of Lightroom. If you start to think of it as setting the white balance to the light that was present when I shot and then adding warmth or cooling down your images, it'll become a much more intuitive tool for you as you color correct your images.